All right, well, you're the one that started because you know the first verse. You don't know it? <laughs> I can't remember it. I'm not singing about myself. I'm you started, I'll jump in, you motherfucker. And who are, are you? you? Wait, the proud okay. Lord said. I just had to remember, okay. All right. I'll start, and then if I forget, you'll kind of have to carry me. So, all right, ready? Ready? Scoundrels Report. Uh, this episode, we're going to jump right into talking about Game of Thrones Season 2. Mm -hmm. So, if you read the books but haven't seen the show, um, there's a little difference between the two. And if you haven't seen Season 1, we're going to give some spoilers for Season 2. So, there's our warning. Uh, you have it, so we don't want no complaints. Oh, uh, that is the entirety of Season 2. If yeah. you haven't seen the finale, season. don't watch this. Yeah, if you haven't seen the se there. season finale of Season 2, which was on yesterday, Sunday... Do not watch this episode until after you watch the finale. Go away. Yes. Get out of here. But for those who have seen season two finale, that was crazy. Not mm -hmm. crazy I expected. Wow. I was the, the, I was expecting the war from the previous episode to stretch on, but I haven't read the books, so I don't know the nitty gritty. I'll say this, uh, one thing, that's one of the great things about Eric and I, just for background, have read all the way through A Dance with Dragons, so we're caught up in the thing. Uh, the thing with the Game of Thrones as a whole is that uh, it's like life, and that it doesn't follow what you'd expect necessarily. And that always kind of surprised me, you kind of just have to bend with it. On top of that, there are no real heroes or villains, and I think that's something that was, and alliances change and all that stuff. I think that was kind of reflecting this season. Although I will say, one problem between the show and the books is that the show does a little bit more of demonizing certain characters and making them a little more, less morally vague, let us say, mm -hmm. you know. They also get rid of all vague things, period. Yeah, it's a lot less subtle. But that being said, it's TV, and I know there's... You know, Creative there's Liberties. I think we've discussed yeah. this once before. Did we have a related video? I think we <laughs> might have a related video right here. Um, okay, so... Uh, the course of the, the season, we've mm -hmm. seen... Um, they went over the wall. Okay. They went over the wall. The blonde chick with the dragons. The nerds. The nerds. I am cars. horrible. For the record, I am horrible with the character names. So, forgive me. Here's where the spoilers come in. Winterfell got effing sect. Yeah, uh, horrible. Let's see. Burnt to the ground. Yep. Uh, yeah. Let me think. Who died? Do we, any major The, the old guy with the chain. Oh, uh, yeah. Master Lewin. Master Lewin. Renly, which was like pretty early on. Some hooker got beat. Oh, yeah. Um, some other hooker was yeah. blowing a guy. Well, another guy was like, no, no, she was banging a dude while some guy was looking at her with a peak hole. While he was getting blown by another guy while he was being spot. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was just horrible, you know, horrible mess. On a quick side note on that, I've heard a lot of people argue, and I did this myself early on, that there's a lot of gratuitous sex in Game of Thrones. Someone point, here, that's the thing. Someone pointed out to me, it's not gratuitous if you look at it in context. Think of it. In all sex scenes, there's been some story going on, and you learn something important about the characters during the new sex scene, or at least you learn about the world that it's in. Some point out to me that George R. R. Martin's fantasy world is interesting because it's so centered around violence and sex. Like, a lot. Like, and that's something that he kind of points out, is that this is a very, well, he, he, very he, he, okay, okay. crazy kind of world. I got all, all, all the respect for the man, mm -hmm. but think about it. He's an old... Fat nerd writing medieval fantasy. Of course, it's gonna be centered around sex and violence. If I wrote a book, it was famous. It would be all about sex and violence. It would be violent sex. That would be my book. That's the like, title. Oh, dragon sex by Tyler Rodman. And then the dragon would be like, oh, it's, it's a big mess. I don't want to get into it. He has a dragon for a penis. <laughs> That's what's going on. It's you like see, the dragon is one of these things. <laughs> yes. So, um. Dude. The, uh, Joffrey, his character, kind of pushed out near the end. Yeah, um, to be expected. I'm not, I, I, I had mixed emotions about his mom, which, again, character names I forget. Cersei, yes. I was Cersei, hoping, again, um... I want her to die. I ain't say nothing. want her to die more than Joffrey. Who would you rather see die, Joffrey or Cersei? Which Lannister would you most want to see dying? Which would you like to see risen yes, to glory? Um, Let me guess. Tyrion rose in the, risen to glory. And someone else dead. Between the two, yeah. Oh, uh, let's say three. Between Tywin, Cersei, Joffrey. See, Tyron, he's, he's one of those guys where he's like... 
you know, I got money, I'm a badass. He's not really, in my opinion, a bad guy, but he's not really a good guy. He's just pretty much in it for himself. Yeah. But he's not like the type of guy where he's like, I'm going to, you know, backstab everybody, I'm going to, you know, beat people. I mean, obviously there's more to him, I guess, as the story progresses. But Joffrey, he, he can get... I don't want him to, to be killed just to get injured a lot, and then because he winds up. Like, mm-hmm. you know. He's gotten slapped by Tyrion a lot. Which, it's great. <laughs> no, oh, people well. on the internet love that. There's, I'm sure you've seen the ten hour loop set to uh, of just Joffrey slapping uh, Tyrion. Slapping. Well, Tyrion slapping Joffrey. Oh my gosh! Now it's it's spreading to me. The name. <laughs> so what about that side story with the Hound? The thing with the hound, not the dog, was pretty good. Um, uh, the, the thing with the hound, again, he's a character who, he first comes off as being someone that you look at and he's like, oh, he's this violent dude, but uh, he, uh... They he's got this, a pretty violent dude. Right? Well, he is a pretty violent dude. But, <laughs> Crazy violent. Yeah, he loves killing. So, compared to the storyline, how's the, uh, the books, how's the TV show compared they add some things, they take out some things. Things I add for the most part, I'm like, all right. There is a couple things they add that I really like. Things they take out, I miss a lot. But hmm, it is what it's, it is. It's like this. You're on a train ride. The destinations are the same. The track is the same. The scenery outside is the same. It's just you're in a different train. You don't have the same features. It's not the same feel. It's not the same comfort. It's different taste. But you, you, yeah. the end result should be the same. Yeah. Just different the way you get there. What, I, now you got people saying, I still think the books are, well, I don't want to say the books are better, but the books, I prefer the books. They're a lot the deeper books. and more complex. No, with me, yeah. I prefer the show because I haven't read the books. Plus the books you may get kind of bored with because it, is, it honestly is written in such a way where uh, some people may have a problem with kind of the pace of certain things mm-hmm. and the language and all that stuff. I mean, it's it's not written like Shakespeare or something where it's like old timey. Whatever, you know, but still it's I can I can understand people's problems with the books. I've loaned I loaned the books out to a friend before and he was kinda like, eh, I couldn't really get into it, you know. Whereas if you were to watch the show, I would imagine because it's faster paced and well they do add more sex and stuff, so what do they want? Yeah. Where? That being said, the books are also pretty sexual. Yeah. No one can deny that. And yeah. actually, more sexual... More explicit, I would no. say. No. Like, Daenerys has a lot more sex in the book than... Well, she's 14 in the books, by the yes. way. <laughs> Everyone's much younger. Yeah. Well, well everyone except for the brain. 13. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, no, every time you watch the show, you guys kind of sit there and uh, whisper amongst yourselves about, oh, this changed or that changed. The little birds. Like the stuff like with uh, <laughs> Stannis and the Chicken Red. Again. Melisander. Melisandre. Melisandre. And then, like, for example, with the, the creepy wizard guy and all the people yeah, that threw him. Oh, yeah. You said, you said that was a little different. A lot Much different. What about the, uh, again, spoiler, the part where she locks the dude and the chick in the safe? Never happened. No, in the that didn't happen. Never. What, no. the, what did she do with that guy? She's I was going to say, I think she just left him alone. He, he, he acted like a bitch and she left. Yeah, and she, she was like literally, he was literally crying or something. Yeah. He's like, oh, don't no, leave me. I'm the king of God. I'm the richest man in God. He wasn't the, he wasn't the king of God. Well, I know, but. I'm not even sure if he was the richest man in card. He was the was safe, was here, here's what he was. He was the bitchest man in card. See, there was no empty <laughs> safe in the book either. Yeah. That was a different thing. Yeah. Pretty sure. But no, they yeah. still get money by a boat. And How did they? Come inside the little what? Come inside. They got the boat one way. See, that's, again, the same destination. They got the boat, but how they did it, I don't. I remember it was different. I think it was. Just, didn't she like just get gifts from people? I think maybe from selling the gifts from people with cards, something like that. Yeah. Again, the train analogy. Yes, different destinations, but still same destination, different. Or, same, same destination. Yeah. Different same seats on the train. Yeah. yeah. Um. You guys have any final thoughts on season two? Overall, thumbs up. Again, as a whole, I liked it a lot more than I disliked it. There's certain things I was eh, about, and I'm very much looking forward to season three, specifically uh, Ramsey Bolton, for one. No, Ramsey Bolton, uh, The Brotherhood Without Banners. Wait, uh, oh. I have a lot of things to look forward to. and like, In fact, this next season, 
is going to have some pretty huge, huge, huge things, unless they split it across the season after that, which uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah. There's one event in particular that I'm freaking out about. I forgot to mention the uh, the ending clip with the, uh, the, what do you call them? The dead guys? Oh, the others. others. The others. The frozen guy. That, that was really well done. See, and that's one thing that always makes me laugh, because people... People expect it to be focused a lot more on the others. Like, they expect it to be, like, this zombie thing. Like, like with the dragons. Everyone expects, like, they bring dragons in, and then, oh, next chapter, dragons are going to be full-size flying around eating people. No. Because, again, I, I, it's I, close I, to real life. It's, it's slower and it's more progression. It's Exactly. You know? Yeah. I like, you know, there's magic in the story, but yet they're not like, oh, dragons are, you know, full-grown. It's just, like a child, they got to grow up, they got to learn. Mm-hmm. But in the show, when she used the dragon, that was actually pretty cool. I don't know how that was in the book. like this, flames shooting out, you know. A little different in the books. A lot different. Well, it was different. It was different. All right, well, I guess that sums it up. Season 2 of Game of Thrones. Uh, we should have did this for Season 1, but... Eh. Eh. So, if you haven't seen it and you're still watching this, uh, why? Season 1's on DVD and Blu-ray. Go rent it, it's good. Season two will be on DVD and Blu-ray. Soon enough, pirate it. We don't condone or whatever. Pir- Here's what: pirate it because HBO won't let you buy it legally. <laughs> but yeah, don't pirate it. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Don't pirate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait like a year and then rent it on DVD. Links. Check out other videos. Links. If you have a comment or a suggestion for a show, leave a comment. Video response. Give us some hate, love, something. We're desperate. Mm-hmm. Call easy. Bye. <laughs> Someone had to say me. There's like fade out. That I must bow so low. <laughs> you go only a cat of a different coat. That's all, all the truth I know. In, In a coat of gold or a coat of red, a lion still has claws. I think we're fucking up. And mine are long. And sharp, my dear, as long <laughs> and sharp as yours. And so he spoke, and so he spoke, that Lord of Castamere. But now the rains we pour his hall, with not one left to hear. And now the rains. We pour his hall with not a soul to hear. Bum, bum.